from Evgenia, and he speaks about how not to be boring. <laughs> it's working. Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Evgeny, I'm from Russia, speaking from the people who are not smiling. So, the, if you like smiling, you should go to Russia. <laughs> and a little bit of background why I wanted to talk about it. So, because of the project which we are running with my friends, with Adil for example. I'm uh, listening through a lot of presentations recently and giving a lot of feedback to people. And, like, reasonable question which pops up in my head all the time. How I can help people to make a presentation interesting? not boring. This is because it's a serious problem. Like this is, I don't know, for sure you had a lot of experiences of being on conferences, for example, when it's not fun. It's like just, you just lost, like in the middle end. And so it's what we don't want to have in our project, which we're with that deal. And, uh, and I try to formalize it and like think about it. Uh, and also it's valuable for me because I also don't want to be boring, I want to be interesting. And uh, I don't know about you, but it's good to be interesting. Like, people like you, like, they invite you to parties, they, I don't know, like, you also like you, kind of, like, I, I, I don't know, so this, and, okay, if, it's a kind of question, like, how to be interesting, what does interesting mean, and so, let's take the very simple example, so say, I'm talking with my crush, my crush, and, real life story, probably. and, and, awkward silence fell, and they just like, oh my god, she will think I'm boring. And it's like all the thoughts pop up in my brain. And like different facts is flowing through my head. And it's just like, oh, I need to say something interesting. What I should say. So how, what will be criteria? Which out of the facts which I know I need to present to her? What do you think? Like, what, what the property of this fact at least like? What do you think? Talk about scientific problems. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I doubt it will tell me more. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 just I'll say, let's make it very simple. Like, not, not about something like abstract, some like a fact, I don't know what, like one simple thing, like what it will be. Okay, one thing which you can think about is it should be something what she doesn't know, right? Otherwise, why well, it's interesting. So we just say, just, okay, do you know what the Battle of Gettysburg took place in 1861? First of July. Okay. Uh, real life story, by the way. <laughs> okay, you know. Why is he telling you this? It's just. It's an interesting point, and the point is here. She didn't know it, although somehow it's not interesting for her. Why? Why this fact? Why the fact which we doesn't know? Sometimes it's interesting, sometimes it doesn't. The reason is pretty simple, intuitively even. Like, if you organize all the facts which you do not know, there are some facts which are close to your field of knowledge, the field of interest, and some facts which are far away. If you're very into history, this fact is maybe interesting for you. If you're not, she wasn't. I find out. So, <laughs> it's, it's not interesting. And, this is so simple, it's like obvious, absolutely obvious. Before you start to communicate with someone, you need to understand this person is interesting in what you're trying to say to him or her. And, but surprisingly, people when they're doing a presentation, they're making this mistake all the time. They start to talk about something uh, which is interesting for them. Because your field of knowledge and the field of knowledge of the audience, or like or one person, if you're talking to one person, is different. And so, I don't know, it's, it's so obvious when you talk about it, but it, it happens all the time that someone comes to stage and say, you know, I'm really interested in X. X is great. We need to do more of X. X will change the world. And they're just, what's, what's X like? How is it related to my life? Like, could you, could you maybe like put a definition, for example, for the, what's an X? Or like give like a, I don't know, explanation, example? And the reason here is, like, deeply psychological, it's exactly the same reason why I said this stupid thing about battle. <laughs> because I thought it's interesting, right? So I, I like, scanning my head, what's interesting, what's interesting? <laughs> oh, this is interesting, but it's interesting for me. It's not interesting for the other people, like, for the, my crush. Was. And, <laughs> and uh, I'm not, uh, I want to make a little bit of a contrast here with the previous talks. Uh, my opinion is, in life, if you want to build a relationship with someone, communicate with someone, you need to bring value 
to this. And the value is one of the most important components. It's some information which is interesting for them, for other people. If you're super enthusiastic about something, it doesn't mean that you will build a good relationship with people. You need to think what they want, and then they will give you what you want. And you run this game like for a long time and you build good relationships. Okay, so this is my... My spontaneous talk. Yeah, I, I would like to say that... Um, uh, first of all, congratulations for giving this spontaneous talk. It's not easy to do that. Um, and I, I believe that it's going to be like a mix of them. Like if you always try to uh, please other people, and you're not going to be able to be like fully yourself. Maybe sometimes I believe that it's going to be a mix between what you like and what do you think other people could could like enjoy. For well, sure, but it's about finding the right people, right? Yeah, and of course, so it, it, if you this way, have someone who's like you're really on the same page as you, you don't need to do anything. It's like, but it's how it works in the perfect relationships. If you're building a network, for example, you're constantly running into people who have completely different interests. So then you need to consciously go for this and think about what valuable for them, not for you. It's not about you here. Um, I thought it was quite interesting. I read a book recently from the founder of TED Talks, and he basically said what, uh, what you said, that you have to think about your audience and what they want rather than what you are interested in. But I'm just thinking, how do you find that out? Like, for example, you have a lot of different people here in this room, right? How do you find something which is interesting for all of us? This is, uh, for example, you're listening to the talks of other people and see for their reaction. So, this is one way. Yeah, but it's a, it's a really good question. There is no clear explanation. I, I think uh, you need to think it through. You need to process what what can be interesting for the people. And uh, I'm not sure how this process is taking place. Actually, it's like your social knowledge like should work here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think. Uh, Have you pointed to me or to? Oh. Ah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you were you were asking yeah. to, to him. Yeah. Okay. No. Um. <laughs> what you right now? What we were. Just saying, I think that's a bit too passive, because it's like um, I should only say something that someone is gonna be interested in. But actually, um, I think there is an art. Um, you can make something interesting for this person. And now the art is how you do that. And now I will um, one statement that uh, one statement first. Um, you're interesting for this person if you're interested in this person. Okay. So that means um, it begins with with first of all like I don't know when you say this with the, with this girl it's like maybe it doesn't begin with you saying something interesting it begins with maybe you want to find out more about her and you be you're interested in her or in this person and you try to get out something and then you realize that there, there might be some common things that you can talk about and then you can say something more directly that is interested interesting and the other thing is that if you don't know this person. You can ask involving the audience or this person by asking questions, trigger questions that are involving them into the topic. And in that moment, this you're acti actively activating this interest in these people like, oh, yeah, actually, that's a good question. I, I didn't think about that. And then these people start being curious before you just start giving a statement like uh, an information that maybe no, no one no, wanted I, I, before. I just, it's simply fact version. It's like, it's not how I suggest to do it. Like, there's, I'm going to give a talk about it, <laughs> uh, which is like a little bit longer, like when I will try to explain in details what I, what I mean, but the opposite right. And also this is a, always a comp compromise. The communication is always a compromise between what you want and what other person want. Mm. Which is what I'm going to say, is like, I'm not very much into inspirational kind of stuff. I just think you need to be very cautious and very aware about it's like two two parties always involved, what you want and what other person want. Just find the right balance. Like, that's all. Um, when I try to be like find out what's interesting for other people, I do it in a very boring way. <laughs> I do the boring small talk, like some common topics you can talk about it, but like in this small talk you easily feel like for what people are burning for and then you can start in this interesting like in this topic where you feel people may be interested 
to explore a bit more and then sometimes it leads to interesting conversations. But it's, it's really great if you, so what you're doing essentially, you're conscious about what you don't know what's interesting for the people yeah. and you're using some technique to obtain this information. It's, you're already way, way ahead, like, right? So because you're conscious about it. That there's going to be different ways how you can try to find out It's not important to be interesting for other people at all. It's okay to be boring. So what? <laughs> yeah, that's what my friend here asked, how can you know to be interesting for all these people? Just be yourself. And they can know if you are honest or not. If you are honest, you are interesting for them. Everyone, everyone looking for the truth in his way, in their life. Maybe some way, some people looking uh, in uh, searching in apple trees, some people in eggs, some people... In every way there is kind of truth. You can find this truth. So it's not just to share your experience. And if you find the people who can understand you, it's good. But to be interesting for people who are not from your war, you cannot continue after that with them. Yeah. This is a really valid point. Uh, it is a different, little bit different worldview. So I provide you more cynical worldview. So you take yours and mine, combine them and get a good view. I feel <laughs>